Good afternoon. Do you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Yak, welcome back. Welcome back. How are you? Hello. Hey, good. So, what about uh, Kevin? So he's uh, still not available today, but uh, we're going to start anyway. And uh, so, we'll come to week fourteen, lecture A. Remember that uh, we have the fifteen and the sixteenth week. It's our FISP presentation week, so you have two weeks. Um, so the topics are finalized, the presentation sequence also finalized. So uh, we are at the exciting uh, moment talking about uh, linear multivariable controls. So it is called uh, linear uh, quadratic regulator so basically all the topics of this week is LQR. okay very exciting topic and we have uh, all equipped with um, the linear system theory so the next question is um, how to use this for controls uh, we had a very brief discussion last time regarding uh, the LQR problem. So I hope you know that today we have a one hour help session on problem set zero nine. Last time we went through full order observer design example and as well as a reduced order observer design with two examples. So let's quickly go through. So this is a control architecture using a state observer-based control, we assume the states are not all measurable. So we simply assume we know Y and we know Q and going through the state observer. Uh, then have an estimation of my state and we have a constant, okay? This is a constant, remember. Uh, gain matrix K to form the control signal. Okay. So there's a separation between open loop system uh, with uh, the compensator. So you should understand the whole control C of S, okay, a controller is a MIMO dynamic controller. Okay, dynamic controller. So the state feedback could be full order could be um, reduced order, okay? Could be reduced order because sometimes on some of the output, uh, some uh, partial state could be uh, directly from measure than output for uh, feedback. So that's uh, the structure we should understand, okay? So reduced order observer, uh, basically, you uh, have n dimensional observable LTI system. So, fully observable, okay, fully observable. Okay. How to estimate it? Basically, we construct a uh, similarity transformation, okay, such that after the transformation, the C matrix becomes two parts, okay. So that's a transformed LTI system. Okay. So the step of this is uh, the step one is here, do the transformation. So you have a partition system. So we then focus on the partition of subspace. So on this uh, X bar, X bar. Um, 
XBAR coordinate. So, so this is XBAR. In XBAR, we know that uh, X2 bar is the full state we can measure. What we really want to measure is X1 bar, okay, X1 bar. So only we need to check about X1 bar. Okay. So what are the available information? U is available, Y is available, therefore V is available, and Y dot is available, and U is available, Y is available, so V is also available. So then we do we focus on the X1 subsystem. So we can see that uh, this uh, this part is all available. Is B okay? Okay. And the Z part okay is A21 X1 okay. So we treat this part is my Z. Okay? So then we focus on this yellow box. It's nothing but the same full state observer. Okay, full state observer. Mm -hmm. So the observer dynamics is uh, x1 dot ha uh, hat dot is this one, uh, and v, and you add h z. H is your observer observer gain. Okay. Then you replace back um, U and Z replace back to all the uh, known information. So you get this one. So then we denote W is uh, uh, X1 hat minus SY. Okay, minus SY. Uh, then what you can get is um, in terms of W and Y, okay, you can write your X bar hat, the estimation. Then this bar must get uh, back to the X coordinate. So this is the X coordinate. It's, this is X bar coordinate. So you need to go back. Okay, go back. Um, so that's it. But uh, the last step is how to design this uh, H is an observer gain matrix. So basically you need to put a co-placement, co-placement, so that uh, you have a predetermined rate of decay to zero for this estimation error. This is observer error, okay? So decay to zero, okay? Well, X bar is already assumed can get uh, directly from Y, so there's no error in curve. But remember, okay, um, X2 itself cannot be directly measured, okay? So it's only on this X, this X bar coordinate. So, in the XBAR system, this is uh, we have known this one. Just the C is transformed into this. So after the Q transformation, okay. So this is uh, our uh, observer reduced order observer dynamics. This is my uh, estimated XBAR hat. Okay. So from the U is from Y. You are going to get this one. And of course, you need to decide what is your edge. Your edge will show up here, 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 and here. And here. Okay. That's it. So, it's, uh, so today, uh, we are going to start a linear quadratic regulator. So then we are going to meet RDE, it's called Ricardi Differential Equation. Okay. So let's seriously start on this. This topic is uh, very exciting. Um, so first of all, let us uh, review the controller design as a controller design. As a MAD process. So modeling, analysis, and design. 
So in this case, uh, what do you what do you know about the system you want to control? You got ABC. Here's what you know. Okay. You also uh, know that uh, your control signal and Y are actually uh, 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 available information. Okay. So then you can uh, analyze uh, uh, your uh, controllability, observability, and so on and so forth. Okay. And you can also discuss the model controllability and the model observability. You really know which one is the control. But in our case here, we assume it's fully uh, observable and fully controllable, which means it is a minimal realization already. Uh, so for analysis, then you ask about what do you want? So what to achieve, okay? What do you want to achieve? Okay, so of course I want to have uh, stability first of a close look. And also I need to have some sort of performance. Okay, performance. So then you do the design. So we actually learned one controller design method. Okay, it's called giving. ABC, giving full speed feedback, uh, giving, okay. So your desired pole positions and assume the system is fully controllable. Uh, so you find out my static uh, state is that static okay gain matrix a k we know how to do this already and uh, you might have to remember that the command is called place okay place is giving a b c and the pole position desired pole position so you can get the k that function to do the job. But manually, you can also compute it. So it's a very, what I call, mechanical. <laughs> and that mechanical means you can write the code to do this. You can automate this. But today is different. Uh, it's from MAD point of view is say, oh, give ABC, give me full state feedback, and yeah, I want to, uh, make this J, this is called performance index. Performance index is uh, uh, be minimized and uh, we'll assume it's fully controllable. So here, um, find the best control signal. Okay, I'm saying signal. We're not talking about law yet. We're talking about signal. U star T is a signal, okay? So here, uh, this is my control signal. So this is a positive definite, could it be RT, but could be constant, let's just write it there. So this is an arrow, we'll define an arrow later. So this is my, uh, these are called weighting matrices. Weighting matrices, okay. And this of course is also weighting matrices. Okay, so these are weighting matrices. So then you can say, oh, these actually are tuning up. Okay, depending what you want, you can tune, uh, okay, you can tune this uh, R and Q and F. So TF is uh, the final time. I assume I do the final time. Later we talk about infinite time uh, when F is infinite. That's the uh, next step. Okay. Next we study uh, when T of F is, uh, T sub F is finite, okay? Uh, but what is the E? E is something arrow, okay? Um, say for example, for example, okay? Um, so you can say that uh, Y T, you have a Y sub R is your desired output vector. So you can see this is the output arrow vector, okay? Mm. So this is the system, find the best control signal, again, signal, and uh, we are going to talk about laws later, okay? Make the J smaller, so smaller. So it's a, J is a function of U of T, okay? It'll be like that. 
So that is the reference is giving. This is giving. Uh, I want the system output to follow this one with a smaller arrow as much as possible. And it is reasonable to put a penalty on the final time saying that uh, in the end point, this should be uh, emphasized to be as much as possible. So this is the usual uh, dimensionality definition state in M input, L output. So A of A, T, A, B, T could be time varying. Okay, time varying. And here, uh, you can assume that uh, number of inputs is smaller than or equal to this. So this is uh, a reasonable assumption about dimensionality. Let's have a close look of uh, what is the E here. Why we need to talk about this J. Uh, I want to bring the physics here, okay? So uh, I told you multiple times, Kalman uh, in 2005, Prague uh, in Czech, Prague in Czech, and I was there, okay? She said, make physics right the rest is math so we have to think about what is a j j here is a scalar okay it's a scalar and those sqr are just um, positive semi-positive definite r is actually a positive definite and semi-positive definite uh, so j is a positive scalar okay positive scalar and T uh, sub F is a final uh, fixed time. Uh, I said fixed, okay, <laughs> I said fixed. Uh, it could be in the future, it's, uh, it's not fixed. I don't know the T sub F yet. Uh, I told you about there's a product problem. Product problem. We have uh, talked about a rocket with, uh, uh, with, uh, with your, uh, mass is time bearing okay you just so what's the best way to burn the mass such that it will can get to the maximum height so in that case t sub f is not known okay you don't know i only want to uh, maximize the height okay so this is my <laughs> so but for non-fixed final time as uh, need some additional treatment, okay? So there's some terms, it's called, this is called terminal cost. So we penalize those big uh, terminal errors. So this is a trajectory cost or state or process cost. Uh, they can emphasize the response speed, so, and it's, Control cost could be related to where you could be uh, linked to uh, energy consumption or, or safety or something. Okay. So these are the physical meanings of these quantities for LQR. Uh, so the reason they choose the Q and the R in here is just by uh, coincidence. Okay. So you don't need to forget. You usually use Q. To be a weighting matrix for arrow or state. R is a um, positive definite matrix uh, as a weighting for the control cost energy. So the question is why linear quadratic? Why linear quadratic? Okay. So it's an effective way here, uh, effective way here to compromise. Okay, so control is a compromise, right? So there's a compromise in the optimal control design. Okay. Uh, but in the, officially in the LQR, uh, LQR, R, linear quadratic regulator means R means regulator. Uh, so you regulate in different meaning. Say for example, case one, as a finite time, as state regulator problem. So my y equals x, okay, okay. And in this case, my uh, reference is zero. So basically, this is uh, y of t is zero. 
of E. So, but E times E transpose is positive. Okay, so this minus sign here doesn't matter. Okay, so in this case, we only talk about states in here. Okay, states in here, states in here, states in here. Okay. So that basically is like in 2D cases, you have x1, x2, or you have y2, y1. Okay, so basically, you have the initial point, and no matter what. So you bring this one to the equilibrium point, okay? So the zero here is the equilibrium point. Or you're starting from here, so you should be doing something like this, so to the equilibrium point, okay? So basically your control is to regulate the, regulate the state to the origin. So, but it could, this is called state regulation. I could do output regulation, output regulation. So what do we have? So we have a, a Y, R is still zero, Y is not X, so I have a three X is Y. So therefore you have a, like, a, you have X transpose, C transpose, X, C, X transpose. So you can, you can write, this is another X prime, S prime. So you do the same thing. You can do X transpose, C transpose, Q, T, C. Okay. Then you have X. So it's the same thing. So you, you treat this one as a Q prime T. So, so then you have something similar to this form. All right. Okay. So I hope you agree with me that uh, this uh, output regulation and state, full state regulation problems are equivalent in this case. That's another uh, beauty, uh, beautiful side of the L2R, okay? So that's why we don't have to say uh, output or state regulation. There's another thing is called output tracking. Output tracking. Tracking means um, you have a reference is not zero. It's not like uh, the previous way I, I want you to act uh, one, to you get me to the original point from the initial x to zero. Um, it's not like that, okay? Not like that. But now, if you think about it, you have a you have a ball, you have a robot uh, n factor in here. And you have, so you have a robot. You have a robot in here. So you want to do a polishing, uh, polishing, okay? So you can see the polishing, you have a desired surface, uh, desired Y of R in here, Y of R already in here, it's not zero. So Y of R, uh, T is not, not zero. So for example, uh, uh, robot, okay, polishing robot, surface polishing robot, or painting robot. Sometimes you do painting robot. So in this case, so of course you will see that uh, this is the end point cross. This is just arrow in here. Okay, arrow in here. Okay. So there's no big difference in here. Uh, it still can be converted to the similar form as in the arrow QR to form regulator problem. So these are just special cases. Okay, so let's now focus on this finite time state regulator. So if we know how to do this, then uh, here, remember, I assume my S is zero, meaning I don't care about terminal cost at this time. Uh, terminal cost is, is not constrained, okay? Constrained. And I do not put my U of T as a constraint. Because usually U of T, uh, U of T is, uh, should be in between a U bar, a U under bar to U so for all T. Usually you have a upper lower limit, but here we don't, uh, this is called constraint. We don't consider the constraint yet. So, so we just do this free form, okay? Finite state regulated problem. So how we solve this one. 
So our goal is to solve <clears throat> u star t. Okay, u star t. Okay, so such that my j u star t will be always less than a j u t for whatever u t you put there. It's always bigger <laughs> than a star. Star is the optimal solution. So the basic idea of uh, solution actually uh, stems back to the Pendragon's uh, maximum principle. <clears throat> I have a original book of this. <laughs> I have the book of this, uh, 1960, maybe translated to English. So the idea is, uh, okay, idea is uh, uh, we construct what something we call a Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian. So we just basically put uh, everything inside uh, the, the T0 to Tf. So this is a, a function L, which is a function of f u x and dt. So remember, in our case, L is uh, x t u x plus uh, u transpose r u. But for convenience, we assume this is a half so that we can do derivative. Uh, so you can see I always have a half in front, okay? That's because uh, when we do partial derivative, this half will absorb. So that is a, that is a L, okay? Um, but, you have original system is x uh, is uh, f x u comma t. In this case, is a special case of a x plus u. Okay. So in this case, uh, l uh, lambda transpose f. Okay. So l is a scalar. F is not. X the f is a n by one. Okay n by one, f is n by one. Okay. So therefore, we need to define a lambda transfer that is the lambda is also uh, n by one. So lambda transfer is one by n. So the whole thing lambda transfer f is one scalar, okay? So this is the lambda, this ax du and the lambda. So it's exactly like this. So that is the, H is this one. <laughs> this one. Okay. So the condition of optimality is that you have to minimize this H. Okay. You have to minimize the H. Okay. Minimize this H. So the sufficient condition is um, not sufficient, it's a necessary condition. Okay. It's a necessary condition. of the optimality, sometimes it's also called stationary, stationary condition. Okay, stationary condition. So it's to make this one has to be zero, okay, has to be zero. By doing that, we are going to partial u here. So you have, a, for this one is, a, for this term, we'll give you r and u, okay, r and u. Well, there's another u, it's, uh, it's a lambda transpose. So basically you have a vector times this one and you'll get the uh, transpose of this, okay? So this is your transpose, okay? E transpose lambda t, so it's basically this one transpose. So you have a vector, uh, you have a vector x, y uh, in r n by one. So you have uh, y transpose x, and you do partial, partial x, that will give you y, right? Okay, so. Okay, sorry. 
And from here, uh, because this is a, a positive semi-definite, it's possible we can get uh, the solution here directly from uh, uh, minus uh, the minus r inverse and b and the lambda. So if you know this lambda, so what is this lambda? So this is called uh, the joint state variable state vector. But sometimes it's also called a per state vector. So how we can get this? So this is lambda is um, something we choose. Okay, we choose. So how to decide this? Then let's uh, have a further look. Uh, so this is a necessary condition and uh, it's not sufficient yet. So to check it minimizes, we need to do a second partial. Second partial will do partial u, and then you what's left is the r here. Okay, this r will come over here. So then, uh, definitely because this is a positive definite, therefore the u star will minimize the edge. Okay, minimize the edge. So that's uh, from Hamiltonian's uh, technique. But we still don't know what's the lambda yet. So how we can do it? So one of the tricks we do is um, uh, let's assume that um, we can find out uh, metrics, n by n metrics. That is, um, so lambda is, you remember lambda is n by one, okay, n by one. We we'll assume this is a pxt, okay, pxt. Um, this is assumption, okay, it's assumption. But you may ask why this is true. Uh, the, the reason is quite deep. Right now, this is <clears throat> for us, it's like we are using a shortcut to understand everything. So, why we can do this assumption? Okay. Um, we need a calculus of variation to calculus of variation to understand that. But uh, here, let's uh, assume that uh, lambda and x are connected through a PP here. And let's see whether we can find this PP. Okay. Uh, there are some trine arrow spirits here. So, uh, so if you really want to know how we can do this lambda, uh, <laughs> we need a calculus of variation. Okay. Uh, let's uh, bypass it by a directly assuming this connection here. So let's do, uh, starting from here, let's try to see whether we can get my lambda p. By doing that, we do a first derivative. So I got two terms. So this is simple, we know it. Okay, we know it. So by doing that, we know, we know x dot is a, x and b. And remember, remember, u is already minus the r inverse b transverse lambda, okay? So this is my u already. I put it in here, so x dot is uh, a and b r inverse b transverse p, the lambda is p, okay? So I got x p in here, so, so we don't know what is the p yet, uh, okay? However, from the lambda, uh, dot, a uh, lambda dot, <laughs> a lambda dot. What is the lambda dot? Okay. Lambda dot will give me um, Q X T minus A transfers lambda T. Okay. Uh, so let's do it through here. So I have a U and a lambda connected, okay, U and a lambda connected through this uh, necessary condition or stationary condition. So now I'm trying to see what is my uh, lambda dot. Yeah, lambda dot. Okay. So from here, okay, from here. So lambda dot is connected to, um, Lambda dot is connected to uh, x, okay, to here, okay. 
So if I put, uh, let's assume this is a Q, okay? Let's assume this is Q. So what I have uh, left is uh, X dot, and X dot is, uh, again, a term in here, okay? Term in here. Um, so this uh, minus Q and A transpose P T like this. Okay. Um, put together, put together. So you still have the X T in here. So let me do something here. P X um, okay, P X is this. P dot X is this one. Lambda dot minus P dot a p times this will give you an equation like that. Uh, so you bracket times everything is x of t, while x of t uh, is arbitrarily. It's, uh, it, you cannot assume it is zero. So therefore, to make the whole thing zero, to who the make the whole thing zero, you have to make everything in front of it is zero. So let me let me do this. So, so that's um, that's the residue here. That's the residue from here to here. Okay. Okay. Um, so we remove everything on this side. We end up with something as P of T. So because this P of T can be solved in advance, okay? Advance, okay. So uh, this is also the conclusion from Kessler's variation. So this is always true because we have some free and terminal conditions. <coughs> And the so in this case the p because lambda t f is zero so the this one is also true to t f so this is the called the cut frequency equation this one okay and it has to satisfy p t f is zero it's called boundary condition so this is called a vector form of a ordinary differential equation. So usually you are going to get x zero. So you got <clears throat> say what is x t? Then uh, you got t from t zero. Then you go to t f. <clears throat> okay. To go to that. But sometimes this is called initial value problem. Okay, initial value problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the initial value problem, but what if, what if you say, oh, I, uh, at the TF, and I want my X, uh, so this is I. So X TF equals to some X, that is giving, okay? I, so you have to satisfy this. Uh, then this is called a boundary value problem, okay? Boundary value problem. And in some cases, you have a, you have a initial value vector, okay? You have a, Final value, so this is T0, this is X, this is also X, this is TF, the X vector. But say, for example, you only have a partial of the state vector at the T0 is none, and you have a, a, the residual part here is none. So, how to solve the ODE? Okay, ODE. So, then you have to try, okay, you have to try. So, so you integrate from here to here, then there is an fit, so you have to integrate this way back, okay? So back and forth, and so this is called T, P, B, V, P problem. <clears throat> it's called a two point boundary value problem, boundary value problem.
So the property of this um, transformation PT, it, it exists, okay, and it's unique. And uh, because of a QRR uh, symmetric, then PT is also symmetric, okay? And so if the R is PD, Q is uh, semi uh, positive definite, then uh, the PT is also a semi positive definite. So only thing is when Q is a positive definite and the PD is also positive definite. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let me summarize. Uh, so uh, this is a U star and this is lambda T. Okay, so this is a still a signal. Okay, but because of this, we can start to call this is a law. Okay, it's a law. Then you can treat everything here as a time varying gen. Metric. Okay, time varying gen metric. And while the P um, is satisfied with the original system, and uh, you have uh, R is the R is the, is the waiting matrix for control signal. Q is the waiting matrix for the state signal. Okay, and the, these are all the facts. So the terminal of PTF is zero. So this is my closed loop system. Closed loop system. Okay, and this is my time varying gain. I said that maybe we should just say. The other is minus sum. And xt0 is zero. Okay, so we start from zero here. And so it looks like a trivial, but uh, the only thing different from our perspective here is different to the AOTI system, co placement. In that you get a k is a constant, okay? K is a constant. But in here, it turns out k is not a constant, it's a time varying. And uh, time varying is dependent on the p of t, uh, which is the solution of uh, the Carty differential equation in the matrix form, okay? Matrix form. Mm. Uh, what is the what is the uh, dimension of the p? Of course, dimension of pt is n by n. Okay, and, uh, so because of the symmetric it's a symmetry, so the total components p i j different p i j is equal to n n plus one divided by two. So that's uh, adding from one to three until infinite uh, until n. So there's not big difference for a full state feedback. Pole placement, full state feedback, feedback. Okay, you cannot you cannot do much. Okay, but but LQR is using a time varying case such that such that such that the J of this format x transpose Q x plus U transpose R u you know, from t0 to tf that can be minimized okay so by doing overall this so by doing overall closed loop system we can guarantee that the aqr cost is minimum okay it's minimum um so this is a totally different uh, framework because in poor placement full state feedback, all observer based feedback and full, uh, full state or, or reduced order, whatever, you cannot say much about this. You, you cannot say anything about this. No, you cannot. Okay. Only LQR will explicitly bring this cost into question. For poor placement, um, that is hard to uh, justify. Okay, so these are two different design frameworks. Okay. So 
there is no performance index driving the pole placement in here. So here are the solutions. So we can see, uh, so you're starting from XT0, your cost will be like this. And uh, given you, you have a different. So this is a, a functional. This is a functional. Okay. No, so, so, so this is a functional. Okay. This is a functional. So if I put uh, T naught in here, so everything will be T zero. Okay, put it in here. So I just press T zero, which is in the beginning. Okay, the beginning. So the optimal. So star means uh, optimal cost. Okay, optimal cost. We denote this is a J star. Okay, J star. So put in the U star in here. Well, U star is given by uh, this uh, KT. Well, the PT is a solution of uh, uh, RD. Okay. So by doing that, uh, by doing this, everything here, and uh, we can get that the real cost, the minimum cost. So this one will be always less than or whatever X to be here, whatever T to be here. So that's the initial, that's the, uh, the cost at the initial uh, point. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, basically we want to summarize the linear quadratic regulator is here, okay, RD. And I told you this is a shortcut, okay, shortcut. I, I fully understand if you feel like, hmm, I still have a lot of questions in here. So I suggest you read Gen Day's uh, chapter 11. Uh, you will get a lot of uh, uh, finite time LQR regulator. Uh, you can get that solved. Uh, let me, I know it's, this is a shortcut introduction. Uh, we are the so we are the solution of like, oh, yeah, oh, that's the XT and the P of T. So uh, this is lambda T. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, why are you ingeniously pick out this? So uh, then becoming uh, finally, so becoming an uh, optimal control signal. So in the end, you got the optimal control law. Okay, so uh, they see that law. So this is not by coincidence. It is um, the, uh, behind all the detailed derivation of uh, finite time LQR derivation from a calculus of variation. So I'm going to walk you through uh, calculus of variation uh, type of uh, um, argument, I'll show you something. I think I uploaded. Um, I think I uploaded this file into our folder of uh, week 14. Oh, I didn't. Okay, wait a minute. This book I will give to you. This book I will give to you. Um, this is a book written uh, by uh, Optimal Composition by NID, Professor NID. From Idaho State University. Um, uh, he retired, he was an RGB fellow. He retired. Um, he talked to me while he was finalizing the book. Um, so let me see. You.
So it is a text that uh, we develop for the class. Okay. So let me give you um, about its contents. Okay. So today we haven't talked about a lot about constraints. Okay. But what if we have it? Uh, so what is the formal statement of optimal control? Uh, then optimal control is uh, not the same as traditional optimization problem. It's a dynamic optimization problem. So historically, we should learn calculus variation first, then we can learn optimal control theory. Okay? Uh, but this part in the literature, um, people already are not using this as reference. Uh, so like you guys, uh, probably you don't have uh, calculus variation yet. So there are some basics about the calculus of variation and the function of functionals, state uh, about it, and how we can talk about increment and uh, talking about difference between a differential and a variation. Okay, variation. Uh, so then how we can find the optimal of a function and our functional. So your, your functional, how you can decide the optimality. Okay. Then we talk about basic variation problem, talking about fixed end time, and, uh, fixed end state, uh, talking about Euler Lagrange equation. Um, then talking about second variation about the extremal function, um, and talk about Lagrangian multipliers method, and uh, so how we can do variation of plots. Uh, solving our optimal control problems. Uh, and then talk about different types of the systems. Uh, okay, different types of systems. And uh, so, summary of uh, Pontryagin's procedure. Uh, we already used that procedure, but we skip a lot of details. Okay. So you, you need to do step by step, <laughs> like uh, using the original plots uh, to solve optimization up up the control problem. We have uh, four uh, stages. Uh, we simply dive into uh, Hamiltonian formalism uh, using our Pontryagin principle. Okay, so that's uh, just the summary. So based on that general discussion, it's possible we can start to talk about uh, LQ. Linear quadratic optimal control system. Uh, then talking about finite time LQR. Uh, this is the section I suggest you to see, but um, you probably need probably need a calculus of variation to have a real deep understanding about it. So it becomes a, a time varying case. Uh, so next lecture, I'm going to do um, infinite time error to our system. And, uh, uh, so this is, has a much better um, coverage about AOQR. And they have a in-depth uh, discussion about um, uh, fixed endpoint okay, and many other um, and also frequency domain interpretation, gain main, gain phase margin can be connected as well. Okay, yeah, connected as well. Um, then discrete time, uh, discrete time, LQR, and Pondragon's uh, maximum principle, minimum and maximum are interchangeable here. Okay. And uh, basically, they talked about uh, dynamic programming and HDD equation. Okay, and the general equation. So then we use that idea to uh, derive a QR system using the HDD equation. HGD equation. So that's uh, another uh, point of view from a dynamic program point of view. So last. Uh, in real world, you have lots of constraints and how you add the constraints and how to handle those, especially for the time optimal control problems. 
um, how to solve the time optimal problem. So you've got to have some constraint, like, so you probably heard about band band control. Uh, the band band control is the time optimal control for LTI system. And uh, so a time optimal uh, control system was the structure. Okay. Uh, we can talk about few optimal control and uh, this, like Q is zero, R is only R and few optimal, minimum few, okay. Minimum few. Energy optimal, uh, state constraints. Uh, say for example, you have a robot, so you want to optimally control it, but we have some state constraints like obstacle avoidance and stuff like that. How you can add this one and how you can use the penalty function method. So then the whole thing is a, a book of uh, 300, uh, so nearly 400 pages for everything. And we only spend two lectures on that. Think about it, okay? And uh, so, yeah, but we have already learned everything here, okay? <laughs> this space analysis, and uh, we have uh, mathematical foundations here. And for the my lab file, so we have lots of examples in my lab to solve uh, AirQR problem. So in fact, uh, in my lab, there's an AirQR command for that. So, uh, so this is our uh, summary. And uh, so we can do next time uh, about find, uh, next time about uh, Pontiac against uh, So next time we're going to do uh, infinite time LQR. Um, so in fact, if you are curious, um, I suggest you get a, some slides from uh, UT Dallas and um, Professor Seth. So he presented uh, to the business people for the lowest learning economics. Um, optimal control is a business for the optimal control is also part of a uh, micro economy and that kind of course material people so what is uh, maximum principle okay what's the maximum principle well, i want to give you a quick tour about this so we introduce um, Maximum principle or minimum principle, okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter. So it's called a necessary condition, okay? Must be satisfied by any optimal control, okay? For anything in the dynamic system. So Pontiagin is the person, his, his first name is Edia. Pontiagin, uh, in this time period, okay? I have his book in 1964. Okay. I have that uh, contract book. So, using dynamic program idea, we can prove this uh, maximum contract in maximum principle. And also, uh, we can talk about sufficiency condition, not just necessary. And uh, there's some computational method. Um, for computational method, it's basically uh, to compute uh, optimal control policy. Uh, um, and uh, interestingly, uh, uh, for numeric methods, uh, it's not matured to the point like uh, solving ODE, uh, okay? numerically. Um, so OCP involving um, cross state equations is actually very involved. But fortunately, uh, our lab has a, a software called Riot that can solve a very general form of um, optimal control problem. So I, I invite you to check our website, it's a Medtronic. 
dot using my head dot edu slash right uh, doesn't matter upper upper case or lower case i find out more okay so let's uh, see what's going on how to make a statement of this problem so contracting maximum principle is uh, proposed to solve uh, the the following problem, okay, the statement of it. So you got uh, general f x u t. So in our case, uh, it could be like this: a of t, x of t, e of t, and u of t, right? So this is the LTV system. So this is x dot t is like that, okay. Mm -mm. Okay, here's two. So state variable, control variable, and these are the N, N, E, or L, and N. <laughs> so this is, so function S is assumed to be continuously differentiable. So in our LTV system, yes, this is true. The path is the state trajectory, and state trajectory, and U is our control trajectory. And Control. I don't want to use transaction. I use a signal. Control signal. Okay. So that's our uh, general discussion. Uh, F F can be anything, all right? So, so uh, we assume we have a admissible control. The control might be in certain domain, okay? And what we see in so it's a it's a E of n, and this is the the function uh, you know, you know, RM uh, dimensional uh, space. But say for example, if you have a U is, uh, U, this is uh, a space, uh, it's a set, okay, it's a set. So this could be uh, something like this or other form, okay? And uh, we only care about finite time domain and so our objective function is so you have S. You have S is only linked to the terminal cost. So S is terminal cost. S is your um, uh, some nonlinear function. And remember, X transfers X uh, QX plus um, uh, when S is half of this uh, U transfers R U. So this is just a, what we call linear quadratic form of the F. Okay. So everything we learn is a special case, okay? So a special case. But now I'm putting this one in the more general case. So we'll see. So what we are going to do is uh, inside of this uh, set, uh, it's called uh, the miserable set of control U. Um, it's constrained, remember, okay? And this is a dynamic system. Okay, this is my dynamic system, linear system, okay? Oh, no, no, sorry, nonlinear system. Okay, so I want to make cost in here plus final cost to be minimum, and this is becomes my constraint, okay? So we assume the star is optimal, or X is also called optimal trajectory, and the J star will be optimal cost, optimal cost. So these are just the names. So this, this block is uh, the problem formulation. So because this is a equality constraint, we have to satisfy them. So this is just cost structure. And this cost structure J is a function of U of T. And so this is a function, okay, the function. So there are uh, several cases, uh, special cases. So if you have this form with turn the cost with a regular cost integration, that's for both of problems, both of them. Okay, both of them. If you have new cost, a new, new terminal cost, okay? It is called Lagrangian form, okay? A Lagrange form. If F is only terminal cost considered, so this is called mayor form, okay? 
Boston Marathon, Lagrange Boston. Uh, so it could be like linear terminal cost subject to this. So it's a linear mayor form. A lot of people in management, in business and economy, and people care about, I don't care about your trajectory. I care about by this time, what's my cost? Okay, can you maximize by that time my tenure time capacity? So that's why this, this, um, Professor, and just uh, figure out the linear mayor form, okay? And of course, um, the rocket scientists, they don't do that. They, they actually direct the J's team, okay? <laughs> J's got the team, all right? So, yeah, you just got other problems, okay? Uh, so both the form can be reduced to linear mayor form if we design a new state vector like this. So you have a n plus one component like a yi is xi, okay? So then you define this one and so you integrate the last one. So this is just like integration, okay? The last one, you expand it to this, okay? The others are just the x. So you append the last one and integrate it. So basically it's trying to accommodate this integrate. Then you say, what is the, uh, it's actually integration of the T, but I care about when this is capital T. So it is transformable into a linear mayor form like that, okay? Okay, let's see, of course, this is zero, zero, da, 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 zero, one, okay? And times Y. So this is straightforward actually. So optimality the principle uh, interpreted by the Bellman principle using a dynamic programming, he said that if you have an optimal policy, uh, whatever the initial state and initial decision are, the remaining decision must be, uh, must constitute an optimal policy with regard to the state resulting from the first decision, okay? So in other words, um, there's a picture to say that. So you have a, from A uh, to E, okay? So you have a, a policy uh, already designed to make uh, A to B, that's optimal. Okay, okay. So then from B, so this is uh, something like that. If A, B, E uh, is the optimal path from A to E, okay, A to E, the solid line is optimal. Okay, okay. So in other words, um, if you go from A to E and uh, if you first do A to B, Okay, so B to E is also an uh, optimal path uh, beginning from the B. So uh, if it is optimal, it is, uh, the part of it is also optimal, okay? So uh, the proof is actually, this is a tr um, by contradiction and there's another path uh, Existence assumed here B C E is uh, optimal for only B to E, so the B C E will be greater than B E, and uh, the A B E is the cost of A B and B E uh, will be smaller than A B and B C E, and it will be A B C E is to J. So this contradicts saying that A B E is uh, the optimal path from A to E, okay? Okay. okay. Uh, right. So, uh, there is a dynamic programming example uh, talking about a state coach problem and uh, you have uh, different stages of uh, 
for each of this one from one to two, cos to this two, one to three, cos to this four, one to four, cos to this uh, three. So this is the first stage. Uh, then uh, from two to five, the cost two to five, two to five, cost is five, is the seven, okay, seven. From uh, three to five, uh, it's a three. And four to five will be a four, okay. So I want you to find out, so all these are, uh, the second stage, uh, you have five to eight is one. Six to eight is one, six is six, seven to, uh, sorry, seven to eight is three. So, so on and so forth, you can do something uh, similarly. And, uh, something similar. so, and I want you to identify what uh, are those uh, optimal passes so that you can make uh, all the choices uh, maximize, uh, maximize or minimize. Okay. So the, the, if you put a negative J, then it's a minimization. Uh, if you maximize J, then this is a minimize, okay? So we can use the same, uh, the, 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 this, uh, this is what they call the principle of commanders, okay? So in words, it's like, uh, if you have a, a optimal policy, uh, uh, whatever the initial state and initial decision are, the remaining decision also are optimal. Okay, starting from there. So I like that. I like that. It is true. So, so if you go from here to here, uh, okay, and so this is uh, A to B, uh, A E, uh, J E is already optimal. If you do the optimal until B, okay. So then the, resid the residual part, uh, E is also optimal, okay? E is also optimal. Um, but that's actually philosophical to your life. Um, <laughs> you should always then um, try to make um, your effort to optimize, then um, all the trajectories is the optimal solution. Then using this same idea, you can solve this problem called uh, dynamic TV example. So there must be a path. So there are so many combinations. You must have a way to solve it. So that solve it by stage by stage is a very good one. So this is like, uh, we don't know what to choose. Uh, we choose U1, U2, U3. That will be the optimal path, okay. Uh, so, if it is optimal, then uh, everything else uh, will be, um, so this uh, this is a recursive way. So you put in the UN uh, minimum uh, already here, optimal solution, okay. So minimum cost, given that the current state S and the decision taken a UN, okay, uh, is all, kind of recursively uh, expressed like this. Um, this whole recursive uh, policy iteration is called dynamic programming. Uh, so it's interesting, can all, all, only will solve it by backward procedure, uh, starting at the terminal stage, stop at the initial stage. Not like forward solving, it's the best way of solving. Um, so here is uh, <coughs> uh, the solution procedure. I don't have time to do this. Um, so the dynamic programming idea for those discrete arguments in the continuous time is the same. Okay, it's the same. Therefore, principle of schematic they can always use in uh, uh, solving the general optimal control problems. Okay. Talking about state time space, talking about doing the variations, 
Declaration. 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 So, so then your value function, you introduce a value function like in uh, Perlman dynamic programming. So um, because um, because if at t is already optimal, so you add a delta t it should also be optimal. Uh, how to how they should specify the equation? So the question is uh, the value function can be written as this first order variation, and we have uh, at least this one. Uh, so some derivations we are going to get. Um, yeah, because we don't have the V in here, so it turns out. So this whole thing should be zero. And when you delta T goes to zero, you will have this one. This is your boundary condition. And maximum of objective function. Uh, we introduce uh, Vx, okay, as uh, lambda t at uh, the optimal solution trajectory, and that is called the earth joint. Okay, by introducing the earth joint, uh, introduce a Hamiltonian. Well, this is my f. This is my lambda. Actually, it's a value function partial x. And this is uh, then f times lambda f. Okay. So if we do t derivative, this has to be zero. Okay. So this whole thing to solve it is called HJB equation. HJB equation. Okay. And from here we can get the solution of the procedure. Um, oh, uh, there are a lot of details. Uh, but uh, in the end, in the end, we are going to have uh, a joint equation like that. And basically, it's equal to a Hamiltonian partial H partial F. And this is a lambda t here. So we derive from different angles. So remember, h is uh, what we did. Uh, this one is a uh, half of uh, uh, h is uh, l plus uh, lambda t f. Okay. So this is x transpose to x plus uh, u transpose r u. This is l plus uh, lambda transpose uh, here. And you have uh, F, F is AX plus B, this is your F. So uh, partial H, partial X, what's that? So this one will give you a QX, okay? And here plus uh, A transpose lambda. Okay, A transpose lambda. So that will give you this, okay? And then this is the terminal cost. So it's, it's dependent on a partial, this one here. But in our case, this is zero. In our case, it's zero. And uh, if you do x dot, uh, x dot is uh, f. f is uh, partial h, partial lambda. But remember, h is, uh, L plus lambda times L. So you do a trans, so you get F. Okay, which is X dot. Um, so these are the <laughs> revealed uh, steady equation and other joint equation. So the whole thing called a canonic system of equation or canonic of joint. So I should have stopped here and then uh, let's uh, have, uh, I'll open the Zoom. Uh, let's have uh, a meeting at uh, six, okay? Uh, I, I think at 6.05 we'll have our trouble.
so take a 10 minute break, then we'll come back. There are many slides of this one uh, about uh, examples, and, but I believe this is uh, pretty heavy to many of you, okay? Um, but I suggest you, you check Naidu's um, book. It's uh, actually better, more accessible okay, to everyone. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to end the meeting. Uh, and professor, yes. uh, excuse me. Uh, what are you going to do for the help session? So since the homework is not going to do next week. Yeah, we talk about FISP or anything else. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to meet cool. uh, at six o'clock, and we 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 mind storming about FISP, and if you have questions about FISP, it's actually FISP uh, helps us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bye. See yeah. you in ten minutes. See. You. Uh -huh.